Happy Monday, everyone. I'm Martha with Nature Niche, and I'm here with um, Shelby Gentle, and she's going to talk to us about um, Little Forks Conservancy's Conservation at Home program, and uh, Nature Niche, our store, pursued their Conservation at Work certification. So Shelby, can you tell us a little bit about you know, what it takes to, to do this and why somebody would? Yeah, so conservation at home is pretty much an everyone can do something program. Um, we believe that by having people bring conservation practices into their yards, it can really have a big impact on the environment and our wildlife. So conservation at home is sort of an education and recognition program. We wanna help educate people on those conservation practices and also give them recognition for all of their hard work and all of their efforts. Um, so it's actually a program where people can get certified and they receive a conservation at home or a conservation at work sign um, to put in their yard that can kind of show off what they've done and hopefully encourage other people to um, sort of get involved. It might pique their curiosity. Um, so we will come out and we will do a free site visit uh, and see what sort of practices people are doing in their yards. Mm -hmm. Um, if they have questions, we can talk about that, but the program is based on five uh, sort of guiding practices. So it's eco-friendly lawn care, stormwater management, planting native species, removing invasive species, and building habitat for wildlife. Great. And so we're going to, um, we went and did an audit outside as part of the class that we held here, and we'll show you some quick clips of those conversations. So here's the form that uh, the Little Forks Conservancy uses when doing the on-site uh, evaluations or audits. And you can see there's a section focusing on um, native vegetation and the control or management of invasive species, um, along with practices that help with erosion control, um, stormwater management, and water conservation on-site, as well as um, good conservation practices related to lawn, if there is any, um, and general uh, yard management practices involving pesticides. And then a section that focuses on wildlife habitat, things like supplementary feeders or houses, um, brush piles or other habitat structures, and um, a source of water. So this is what Shelby and I went through as we toured the nature niche landscape. So I will walk around with the landowner. Um, I'll see what sort of plantings, what sort of um, practices they've already implemented and we'll kind of check them off as we go. I'll take some photos and we'll create a file for them. And then if they have any questions, they can ask if we uh, think of anything that we think would be a good addition. We can also talk about that. So I see Great. starting off that you have a rain barrel here. I do. Which is awesome. Yep. Um, yep. I'm assuming you've used that to water a lot. Yes, of. and we emptied it several times this spring when we had that really bad drought. We use that to help supplemental water because this is facing south and my plantains along the south side of the building bake. And even, even this one, it's maybe like a third of the height that it normally is because we were so dry at the end of May and June. So I use the rain barrel a lot for easy watering of the, of the flower beds That's out awesome. here. Yeah. Landscape company to mow every couple of weeks. Um, and I just got tired of doing it, tired of how it looked. There is technically a, an area drain okay. here in the middle, in the middle. with riprap over it. It's kind of funny. So this technically is a rain garden because they graded the front to slope down to this riprap covered That's area nice. drain. But this is sandy, sandy, sandy hot, and the water never gets that far. I mean, yeah, those plants get there. It's a little bit moister soil, but I've never ever had standing water out front. Incorporating native plants. Um, so that could be something like butterfly garden, a rain garden, yep. even some sort of shade garden, um, yeah. but finding ways to bring native plants into your space, which you've done a great job of. Thanks, so. yeah, and I, I call this, it is a rain garden, I call it my demo garden, because I wanted to show, <laughs> like you can use native plants in a setting like this in front of your store, and it still has, and it's great, like it's very useful when I do my plant sales, I can walk people in mm -hmm. and say, this is what it'll look like mature. Um, 
Plus the goldfinches love, like I have goldfinches Wonders. and butterflies and lots of pollinators use, use the, that's awesome. I don't have a lot of feeders or water features up here because Wackerly is such a busy street. I didn't want um, to attract wildlife and then have them get hit with vehicle yeah. traffic. So it's kind of a planned, not too many things Decision. in the front. I have, I put in this little, um, it's just plastic. Like I think it's a planter, but I filled it with some riprap um, so that if I were to ever get a lizard, a snake, a toad, something in there, mm -hmm. they're able to climb back yeah. out. Um, and when it rains, that's a little, you know, place that pollinators or other wildlife can get some water. Yeah. But I don't. Um, it's a it's a periodic thing, mm -hmm. not something I keep filled all the time, and not something that's pretty enough that somebody yeah. will want to walk off of it. That's great that you're thinking about ways for them to get out though. So yeah, I've not... learned the, yeah. I learned the hard way at home. I had a, a basin that was smooth metal and only maybe about this deep, but um, I think I had a skink ground in one and I'm like, nope, never again. Yeah. So at any kind of stormwater thing I put out has rocks at a level that the thing can climb back out. Mm -hmm. Which is the same thing with like those bee baths too, yep. having some sort of water source with rocks in it that they can land on, yeah. get a drink, yep. and be on their way without yep. having any problems. Yep. So. And this helps with erosion too. The rocks like break up the energy because this, it's a good size roof. Mm -hmm. And when we get those really awful, intense rainstorms, um, it, it actually started eroding under under my goldenrod here. So I put some extra riprap. If I didn't, it would just blow through here and like mm -hmm. wipe out the... I'd have quite a little ravine going yeah. on. So, yeah, Lots using it to also break up the water energy. Nice. Yeah. I have another one of those along here. And then I use this hot, dry west side of my building to showcase some of our really pretty native grasses. So I like to walk people here. I feel like our native grasses don't get enough love. And so I have... Um, prairie drop seed. Uh, this is purple love grass. I have big blue. This is all switchgrass except for this is little blue stem. And it's planted in a very organized manner. So it doesn't look like the prairie does, which I did with seed. These are all planted um, to have repetition. And every so often behind the grasses, I have pale purple coneflower and prairie dock. Was the edging in here already? That was already yeah. here. I laid down the wood chip path. This area I'm still working on. I tried uh, the Be Happy Turf Mix and it. I pushed the limit. Yeah. It's too hot, too dry. I'm not going to irrigate. Mm -hmm. And so and people at the hotel like to like, sit on the um, wall and like throw their garbage behind them. So my new, my new tactic, I planted um, tall Indian grass and um, Canada wild rye that I had left over from some of the plant sales along. And I'm hoping if the grasses get big and like hang over and tickle their ears, mm -hmm. when they won't sit oh, on the wall yeah. anymore. Yeah. Deter them. Yeah. There. Yep, I did. The now that the, the vegetation is getting established, um, we put the, the bluebird box out. No, no, nobody, we're so, so this is US 10 right here. And I know my surrounding landscape isn't great. So I use it as much as demonstration and I have it strung up for house sparrow deterrence um, to sh teach people with as much as it actually getting used. So there's a quick look at that bluebird box. So this, they used to mow, they just scalp. Um, when I had them stop mowing, I was able to see, yep, most of this was weeds. There was some native uh, sand uh, drop seed. Yeah, sand drop seed. So this grass was actually already out here, and that's a native, um, a native perennial grass. So when I was herbicide prepping, I worked around that. And then there's some cactus planted out here. And I planted um, the larger prickly pear that, yeah, that's more common in Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, but then that 
that posed some concerns because people from the hotel like to just like heft their dogs over the wall and let them run. So we just put up our no paws in the prairie, beware of prickly pear signs. To hopefully like, discourage that. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Do you use much for herbicide, pesticide, any of that? Do you spot I can, treat? we hand pull and I use so far, other than the initial um, site prep before I did the seeding, mm -hmm. we've just done cut stuff treatment okay. out here. We had some, the Siberian elm likes to seed itself in here. Okay. I'm looking for a cut stump with blue dye. Well, if people want to venture into the prairie, we, we cut a few here. And then um, we went through the understory of the little bit of woodland I have. Mm -hmm. And we cut out um, Tartarian honeysuckle, one of the invasive Eurasian honeysuckles, Siberian elm, common buckthorn, glossy buckthorn, and just treated the stump. And I was just using a weed wand with a sponge applicator um, using triclopyr. Okay. So a uh, Garlon 3A, wetland safe. Uh, but that way you're putting the chemical just where you need it. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to get um, you want to get within four inches of the ground if okay. you can, and treat within five minutes if you can to be most Very effective. Fine. So yeah, one of, one of my clerks was out here with the lopper, and I was dabbing. It's also once you cut them that close to the ground, sometimes they're hard to find. So the faster you dab them, <laughs> the easier. The easier. <laughs> Cause it's hard to like, you turn around and then you turn back, and you're like, where'd it go? It was right here. <laughs> it was right here. Yeah. Um, behind us, yeah, we don't do a lot of formal composting in part because I like the dry sandy soils that keeps the weeds down. Yeah. I'm just picking out the plants that can take that site condition. But um, any weeding that we do, so here we mostly weeded um, Horealism, which is in the mustard family. And once you pull it, it can keep developing. Oh. So that we bag and landfill, mm -hmm. kind of like you would garlic, garlic mustard. mustard yeah. Um, but other things like I try to keep it's native annual, but the horse weed can get really mm -hmm. tall and maybe an aesthetic that isn't as pleasing to the neighbors. So I'll handful those common mullein, um, the little tree seedlings, if I can pull them out, we did. And then we did a lot of, um, understory invasive cutting to okay. today. And you can see we kind of piled. So I had some. Decent sized glossy buckthorn that we cut, and I just made this was already like a soil spoils pile, mm -hmm. and we um, just keep pile layering vegetation yep. over that. And I figured it's shelter for the bunnies, or chipmunk squirrels. They'll, they'll use it. Yup. So, yeah, we just want to say thank you for everything that you're doing. You checked off a bunch of different practices and all of the criteria areas. Great. So, we are happy to provide you with your Conservation at Work certification. So you can do this too! You. <laughs> I hope you found the walk around tour of the Nature Niche store property helpful. We certainly want to encourage people to be good stewards of the environment and connect with nature. And there's so much we can all do um, with the properties where we work and where we live. And uh, I just hope this inspires you to adopt some of those conservation practices and uh, help you think about how you could use more native species in the landscape, manage invasive species, and manage uh, storm water and uh, provide more wildlife habitat with the land that you influence. If you find yourself outside of the Little Forks Conservancy's service area, um, the Conservation Foundation uh, started this program and operates in northeastern um, Illinois in the Chicago area, or perhaps um, another nature center or um, other conservation organization near you has a certification program. You can also look into programs offered by um, the Wildlife Habitat Council, Monarch Way Stations, and Wild Ones. And I'll drop some links into the, the video description to help you find more resources. Take care and have a good week.